Welcome to The Disruption Is Now. Join us on this enlightening journey as we explore how AI is impacting our jobs, careers, lives, and the human experience. Each episode, host Greg Matusky will converse with visionaries and innovators at the forefront of AI, diving into its challenges, opportunities, and impact. So buckle up as we venture into the heart of disruption, and together, let's unfold the future. Well, welcome to another episode of The Disruption Now, the podcast where we talk about all things generative AI and AI. I'm your host. I'm Greg Matusky. I'm the CEO of Gregory FCA. We're a PR agency. But more than that, I'm a passionate storyteller, and I'm enthralled and just fascinated by the opportunities that uh, AI presents, mainly in the generative AI side. But I'm also uh, very interested in how it's going to add to productivity and change our workplace and change our lifestyle and economy and our culture. So um, today I have a, a guest who I'm very excited about. Uh, full disclosure, she comes from a client of ours. It's an interesting company that works with other uh, companies within the supply chain to safeguard and de-risk the movement of freight all across the, pla- all cr- the planet. Uh, I'd like to welcome the CMO of Overhaul, uh, Karen Stevens, thanks for being with us today. Thanks, Greg. Great to be here and uh, really excited to talk to you about Gen AI. It's one of my definite, most passionate, uh, exciting topics that I love to talk about. So, um, and today, Today's a big news day as we were talking off yeah. camera real shortly. Today was the uh, Dev Conference from OpenAI and you had watched that. What are some of your takeaways from the from the news conference? I mean, it's it, well, for one, it's 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 ironic that we're talking today. We had to reschedule this um, once or twice, and uh, for it to land on OpenAI's uh, developer conference day is somewhat ironic, given the topic that we're covering. Um, lots to to go through in the conference. I'm sure by the time this airs, a lot will already have been unpacked by many an AI enthusiast, but. Um, you know, my takeaways are really exciting to see GPT-4 Turbo go live, um, cost-efficient approach. I think they they heard um, some of the feedback from the developer community and the enterprise community at large that the, we, we need to find more kind of economical ways to be able to scale GPT. Um, so excited to see that as well as a lot of discussions around natural language. Sam Altman actually said... Um, and let me get this right, because I actually wrote it down. <laughs> Natural language will be a big part of how people use computers in the future. So as we were kind of talking about off camera, there's a, there's, there's a shift now because you don't need to be uh, a- able to speak code um, and be embedded within JSON and other environments to be able to have um, developed GPT tools. So it's exciting to see kind of what that means um, for the world, honestly. Um, yeah, it is. It is. You know, I'm not a coder. I'm not a technical person, but my son, who I work with closely, mm-hmm. is, and he'll see me use natural language with uh, with uh, ChatGPT, and he'll say, "Dad, you're just coding. You don't you don't know you're doing it, but you're creating a a little computer code that's running through." For instance, we have a media training uh, little prompt that'll ask a question, stop, wait for a reply, evaluate it, and give a better answer mm-hmm. to it. And it'll do it as many times as we ask to do it. So this concept of natural language is still not really well understood, I don't think. And I'm constantly socializing that within our firm in that when you ask it to do something, you can riff with it. You don't have to be structured. You don't have to be, you don't have to worry in the writer sense, right? We always worry about the format or the formula, if there's a, a lead, if there's a transition, if you're being repetitive. All that goes out the window, and I just talk to the machine to see what'll what'll give me back. So I think that's one good takeaway on the coding side. It's going to be more easy to use in the future mm-hmm. with these. What were these GPTs they were talking about? Yeah, so about? Taylor GPTs is going to be an interesting one because it allows, and, and I still have a lot of learning to do just from the announcement today. So again, I'll, I'll be unpacking it overnight and into into tomorrow just to understand how that will impact our, our company as well. Um, in, in actual fact, Overhaul has been very closely aligned to a lot of what's happening in the Microsoft community around OpenAI. As you know, OpenAI is a, is a partner with Microsoft. Overhaul has had the opportunity to be 
part of the what, what I'll call early adopter community within the Microsoft Azure community um, to uh, trial out and experiment with the um, GPT technology. And one of our um, latest innovations is named, aptly named Risk GPT. Um, ties into supply chain visibility and risk management and what we do as a company. So the, the idea of Taylor GPTs will be interesting as that evolves and we understand more about what that can do for companies and if, if there's further application that we'll take advantage of there as well. And that, and that is a tailored GPT in some respects. Tell us exactly yeah. what that does. It got great, great reception at the Gartner Convention or conference mm-hmm. rather. Um, tell us how, how it reduces risk all along the supply chain. So just to, to give you a little bit of um, context there's around kind of what overhaul does um, to kind of lean into kind of how we're leveraging risk GPT and, and AI and machine learning as a whole. Um, overhaul was founded in 2016 by um, a security, supply chain security powerhouse, namely our CEO, Barry Conlin, as well as other founding partners that had extensive experience in um, managing cargo cargo risk. What what we believe is risk can take a couple of different uh, pictures. It doesn't have just to be about cargo getting stolen ultimately, but risk can mean different things to different organizations. Pharmaceutical and food and the food logistics space, spoilage is a big part of risk. Um, in fact, I think nine out of 10 uh, losses um, is due to spoilage, not theft. So understanding different risk parameters has been part of our kind of DNA from day one. Um, And we've evolved that using uh, different AI and machine learning technologies over the years to give customers a contextual layer of information in addition to kind of looking at the risk profile of their specific shipments. So if you kind of combine that with historical risk and analysis um, and then add the contextual layer of what's going on in the world, what's going on within certain geographies. As you know, um, the cost of life living crisis is, uh, you know, due to ongoing wars, has created a different risk profile throughout the world, natural disasters, extreme weather. All all of those um, issues or challenges are ever present for supply chain. And then looking back a couple of years, feels like so long ago now, but ever present in our mind as to kind of business continuity is, the pandemic and the impact that had on supply chains. So really kind of understanding that in in and of itself and applying that risk profile to customers' shipments um, takes machine learning and knowing kind of being able to have that year's worth of historical data, which we have with our recent acquisition acquisition of FreightWatch. We now have 20, 20 plus years of data to work with to understand highly complex supply chains. So one of the areas that Overhaul works in is risk monitoring. So our platform offers visibility up from track and trace all the way up to more um, white gloves, so to speak, but the ability to monitor risk in real time for our customers. Our customers can choose to do that through their own uh, risk monitoring teams or or, um, real-time monitoring groups, or they can leverage our own team so one of the areas that we've always looked to and endeavored to kind of improve is efficiency of what we call our watch officers, the individuals actively monitoring through our platform. Um, and in, in a lot of cases, they're, they're following um, uh, standard operating procedures that are going to help us mitigate or prevent risk ever happening. Um, and that's what we focus on. 90% of what we do is prevention. In the 10% or less than 10%, in fact, our, our protection rates are upwards of the 99.99. So in that very small percentage of instances where there's an incident where our team needs to, to step in and support, those are, the, those are the times that have such a high degree of time sensitivity. You're talking about seconds and minutes to react and, and respond in the right way to provide action. Um, and sometimes that's calling local law enforcement, engaging with the customer, um, working with the carrier network to really uh, put things back on track to prevent risk. So help me understand with risk GPT, if I'm the logistics manager, right? What does it enable me to do? Uh, I'm sitting in my office. There's 
it always amazes me the complexity yeah. of logistics, right? It's one of the most uh, variably uh, intensive activities in the world. It, it encompasses weather, ge- geopolitical yeah. issues, uh, uh, destinations. Um, so I'm there. And now what visibility does it give me or how do I manage it? Yeah, so Risk GPT is our AI tool that is, and again, we're leveraging Microsoft um, Azure Open AI services to do this in tandem with our risk monitoring user interface. And what we can do with Risk GPT is instantly deliver clear, data-backed, concise actions for a responding individual, and in our case, our watch officers, to quickly secure a shipment. So it completely eliminates subjectivity in the decision-making. Oftentimes you're in a high pressure environment. So this um, uh, risk GPT agent can help provide the exact information that needs to be, that that the responding watch officer needs to take um, to, to bring that shipment back on course. So if you, if you, if you think about how many other companies are using, um, the GPT technologies or open AI, um, they're using the translation capability to essentially translate a user query, which might be, tell me how many shipments I have here into a structured data queries. Um, and, and this is based on a, a specific data set. So that's pretty cool. I'm not gonna disagree with that. What that does is it shortens the time to do a dashboard lookup. So it's almost replacing a dashboard in many regards when you're thinking about doing it that way. So in that case, the intelligence is basically saving saving you labor time to do the lookup on your dashboard. In our case, um, we are applying that contextual information. So it's not just saving you time for lookup, but it's, it's accessing proprietary information, which we'll probably see more of within the Taylor GPT concept, but accessing uh, proprietary con- con- um, content and information that we have around our customers' unique risk profile and circumstances and providing in-context learning and reasoning on top of that. So it's essentially learning in real time and providing you decisions in real time. That is different from just doing a query against a, da- a data set. It's really giving a more contextual layer to the, to the, to the end user. Well, it's wild, you know, Ten years ago, who would have thought logistics would be at the C-suite, right? I I mean, logistics were an afterthought of business. It was just you had to move the freight initially. But it's really emerged as the heart of business, Mm -hmm. especially as these global supply chains have emerged. And knowing where your freight is and what conditions it's facing is critical to manufacturing, to pharmaceutical, to commodities, anything that – moves around the globe or, or needs to be acted upon quickly to engage in the economy. Yeah. Where do you think this is going? Where do you think this is all going? I mean, the overlay of technology and logistics is just a fascinating part of the economy. And what do you think AI will play in the future in this enterprise? Uh, that, that's a, a, a big question, actually. And, and probably don't fact, fact check me on it five years later because um, a lot is so unknown. One thing that I do uh, do know is, um, and I'm, I'm very passionate about this, is this idea of, you know, the, the, the concept that AI will replace jobs. Um, to me, that is, that's not doing AI justice. It's, it's people that have a really good um, understanding of AI that are kind of come in and, and replace others that, that, that don't quite have that. So as an, you know, as an organization and overhaul, we're, we're passionate across the port board about this on a department level as well as within supply chain. We, you've got to get started and you have to start to kind of discover and develop different systems because for me, it's a big efficiency play. AI is going to make us smarter, smarter become more personalized. Obviously, with my background in marketing, understanding how we can target and access and, and talk to customers, understand their pain points and personalize information so that we're most relevant to what they're they're experiencing. There's an application there, of course, with supply chain because um, uh, supply chain is complex and a lot of the, the questions that they're trying to answer and some of the uses of technology, um, you know, that there's a lot of complexity in that in itself. 
So, you know, just the evolution of the, the, the workforce adopting supply chain best practice, I think is going to be one of the things that we'll, we'll be looking at. Um, and then the supply chain as a whole, um, think about the amount of inventory that moves across the gro- globe, as you mentioned, different products, creating more efficiency and sustainability around that is our two kind of big, big themes um, within supply chain right now. There's economic pressures. Um, cost optimizations are, are um, you know, pretty widespread. Uh, and, and supply chain has to react to that. You kind of read on an almost daily basis different freight brokerages or organizations within the supply chain, log tech space, um, being impacted by that cost optimization piece. Um, so leveraging AI to kind of find ways in which you can create a lot of cost optimizations in some cases, and it's not always replacing people for technology. In some cases, it's finding unique, more um, efficient ways to use technology. So to, you know, top of the hour, we started with like what AI's, open AI is rolling out to, to, today and some of the things that they're doing they're driving down the cost of that, of, of their um, GPT technology to make it more accessible to a wider um, or a group of uh, organizations. And, and I think yeah, it is, it is interesting but, to me. A couple of months ago, I saw a blog post that was talking about open AI and really they were just trying to get the needle into your arm. And once you became addicted, they would raise prices. And I said, when does that happen in technology? Like when did prices go up again? Uh, doesn't Moore's law hold that prices will re, uh, constantly be falling? And haven't we met that expectation mm-hmm. for the last 30 years now and continue to do it? And AI will extend that. You know, one of the things that was really interesting to me when you were talking is this notion of, of uh, culture and socializing. Mm-hmm. It. And here at Gregory FCA, I'm, I'm proud of the fact that we started this not as long ago as as overall, but certainly three years ago, really thinking about hey, how AI would disrupt our industry. And we face many frictions in our industry, which have just been part of the process, which are accepted every day. Little things like, oh, the client didn't get back to me because they were busy, so I couldn't arrange the interview, which is just a natural part of the process in, in public relations. But you really can't go forward if you're missing interviews. There's no way to show value if you're doing that. So we're really using AI now to try to help us come up with, actually craft the the quote for the client and send them the quote. So that's just an editing uh, process instead of a creative process Mm -hmm. on the part of the client. These little things uh, get rid of the friction, which allow us to deliver better value. Mm -hmm. Now this year in 2024, the real... Uh, I guess the rubber hits the road and that we have to show actual uh, productivity changes. And that, that's been going to be the thrust um, within yourself. H- how has overall managed to, to uh, socialize this and why has the culture been so accepting when you still get a lot of resistance out there? I mean, people don't like change, mm-hmm. right? A, they, they're concerned. Will this eliminate my job? Right. All that goes into the psyche of the workplace. So what's worked for overhaul, do you think? Well, I think because we have, uh, first and foremost, foremost, we've always focused on making sure that we're not trying to scale our team beyond our means. Um, Overhaul has always had a big focus on um, fiscal responsibility and profitability as a key goal for us. And we'll be announcing some updates on the status of that soon in in November. Um, and and those, those may be live by the time that you're um, airing this this as well. But, you know, so so we want to do the most that we can with a, a really strong team. Um, and therefore, I think some of the use cases that we've rolled out, not just within our own product, but across the organization, it's all about making sure that um, individuals can do the things that they love most and take away the administrative burden in some cases, as you mentioned with the example on the um, the meeting maker and making sure that that we're able to take some of the minutia out of actually getting the work done so we can focus on those most strategic things. So as a marketer and within the team that I um, work with on the marketing side, we found that there's a lot of administrative burden taken out with the addition of AI. 
Um, aside from that, within our product and how we're developing that, we have the best user group because we have hundreds of team members responsible for the monitoring capability in-house, in addition to user groups within our customer base as well. Um, and what they want to be able to see is the ability to scale beyond scale volumes of shipments that we're able to manage without necessarily having to massively scale the amount of heads that can support that. So it's about where we're currently at and looking at, over the horizon and saying, we can do more with, with the same and we can work, work smarter, and, uh, smarter and, and not harder, essentially. Um, so that's been kind of the mantra of the different uses of AI. And we've done similar things to you as it relates to meeting makers and basically following up on emails, um, providing next steps, action items, call recordings, being able to translate them into very actionable next steps. Yes, those all save time and eliminate a lot of the back and forth with our customer success teams, with our sales, marketing groups and others. Um, and then you add the kind of layer of, well, what can it do for our product and platform? What our customers care about is eliminate, completely eliminating risk in their supply chain. And um, to kind of really hit the nail on that, we have customers that are moving blood products to, for cancer treatments, life-saving stuff, Right. Um, so sure. avoiding the issue where there's a delay and that product can't go back into the patient's arm or um, that there's a, some form of spoilage to the, to the blood product as it's a temperature sensitive um, uh, product, that is what our customers quite literally care about. It's life saving in a lot of cases. Um, then you've got the other aspects of making sure that, you know, the holiday gifts arrive and are under the tree on time. And what have you? So it, it really, it really is something that you know, applying more contextual information, making sure that AI can model past behaviors and help customers make decisions on their future plans. That's that's a really exciting thing that our entire team, not just our product team, not just our users, but our whole team can really get behind. Um, because there's if there's one thing we're passionate about, it's our it's what our customers do and the products that they move. So knowing that we can have an impact to that and, and save that patient or prevent any risk within that particular supply chain, um, it, it really does get us up in the morning and, you know, skip into work because that's that's what we're, we're excited about doing. So AI just helps uh, avoid any kind of subjective issues, incidents, um, and allows us to make faster decisions. Um, so well, Karen... This has been a great conversation. I'll share with you. I probably did my first logistics client 30 years ago, 25 years ago, and it was a freight forwarder. Okay. And it was, it was the very nascent of, uh, EDI. Is that the, is that the term of, uh, information yes. exchange? Yes. If I it's recall still around back today, then. but fortunately API has taken a, a stronger foothold. Yeah. Thank goodness. <laughs> and, and I feel like now I've seen the future of the industry. I've come full cycle, full circle here with our conversation today, because um, what started as a very mechanical and human oriented process mm -hmm. where they'd actually have people on the ground doing all the routing and all the monitoring now is very much a high tech AI generated world, yeah. which will only help us become more efficient, unlock capital, get inventory to where it needs to be to make a better global economy. Yeah. So congratulations. It was Fascinating conversation and uh, best of luck. I'm sure you want to download all the news that happened today and uh, see how you can apply it at overhaul. Thank you. No, it was great talking to you. And it's always good to speak to a fellow AI enthusiast. And uh, enthusiast. we should do yeah. this again sometime once we've had an uh, opportunity to absorb all the, the conference details. And, yeah, uh, that'd be fun. And see how Elon Musk responds to it as well. <laughs> well, uh, you know, with Grok... Uh, it's funny. They always stagger these announcements competitively mm -hmm. and, and they kind of erased Elon's announcement of Grok with all that open AI yeah. announced today. Yeah. So, um, and it does make you think, will he catch up? Will he not be able to catch up? But, yeah. Um, I think as we had some real advances today. I'm excited to see the future. I'm excited to embrace this new era where we can do more with less and, and become more, uh, efficient on every level, including, right. you know, what we do with our, environment, what we do with our capital, what we do with our workforces. Agree. So. Agree. Thanks for being with Thanks us. Thanks so much. Take care. This podcast 
is a production of Gregory FCA. If you enjoyed our discussion today and want to continue exploring the transformative power of AI, please check out more episodes and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. Thank you.